Today we're going to have a look at how we can solve some linear equations simultaneously. And the method we're going to focus on today is substitution. So, first of all, we're looking at some linear equations which have two variables. And we're used to using x and y because we use the Cartesian plane a lot in mathematics. So, for instance, the linear equation y equals 2x minus 3. Um, this equation has an infinite number of solutions. So, for instance, when x is 0, y equals negative 3. Um, when x is 12, y equals 21. When x is a half, y equals negative 2. So we could choose many different solutions. In fact, as I said, an infinite number of solutions where that works. However, if we have another linear equation, and it's not parallel to the first one, then there will be one point where the lines will intersect. So we call this the point of intersection. So when we do have that point of intersection, there is only one x value and one y value that gives us a solution. And the method that we're going to focus on, as I said, is the substitution method to give us that particular solution. So we're going to find this sub, uh, solution here by solving the equation simultaneously. And as I said, we're going to focus on the substitution method. And we usually use this method when at least one of the equations is written as either x equals, or could be y equals, or if we've got different pronumerals instead of x and y, then it could be a equals or m equals, just depending on the pronumerals in the linear equation. So let's have a look at an example. We want to solve these two equations simultaneously. So we have a linear function here and a linear function here and we want to find out what x value and y value satisfy both equations at the same time. So one equation is y equals 2x minus 3 and I'm going to label that number one so that when I say let's look at equation one you know which of the two that we're focusing on. And I'll do the same thing with the other equation. So I'll call it equation two. And that's our first step in setting these up. But you'll also notice that when I set them up, we've got things that line up. So that makes things a bit easier if I tend to use a different um, method rather than the substitution method. So let's get started. What we're now going to do is substitute, because we're using the substitution method, is we're going to sub equation two into equation one. So we've got here y equals four x minus seven. So wherever I see y, I can replace it with four x minus seven. So here's my equation one, and wherever I see y, I'm going to replace it with that four x minus seven. So let's go and do that. So I've just put where my y value was, this 4x minus 7. So now I have an equation with pronumerals on both sides. And so if you're at this stage in simultaneous equations, you should already know how to solve equations um, at this format. So 4x minus 7 equals 2x minus 3. The method I use is I look for the smallest pronumeral. 2x is smaller than 4x, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. When I do that, I have 2x minus 7 on this side, and I just have the negative 3 on the right-hand side. Again, you should already know how to solve these equations. So let's continue. Let's now have a two-step equation where I add 7 to both sides. I now get 2x equals 4, and then I'll just divide both sides by 2, and that'll tell me that x equals 2. So what I've now done is I've found that x equals 2 is a common value for both of these when I'm solving these simultaneously. However, I haven't finished because what we now have to do is find the y value that matches with that x value. So let's do a little bit more working out. Just divide this line here so that I can do my working out over here and you can see it all together on the one screen. So I take this x value. And again, I substitute this x value, x equals 2, into either of the equations. It doesn't matter which one. So I want to substitute this into equation 1. So 
wherever I see x in this first equation, I'm replacing it with the value of 2, which we found over here. Now I just work that out, 2 times 2 is 4, take away 3, and I get my y value is 1. So this is what we started with, these two equations. We used the substitution method, we found x equals 2, substitute that into one of the original equations up here, and we get y equals 1. Now let's write a conclusion statement, and therefore the solution is x equals 2 and y equals 1. This is a pretty important step because what it does do is it then tells whoever's looking at it that you know what the two solutions are at the same time. And that's just an easy way for us to actually check and rather than going through step by step and checking some of your solutions. So now that we've solved these pair of equations simultaneously and ended up with our solution, let's try another example. So let's find the point of intersection of the lines 2x plus y equals 7 and x equals y minus 4. So again, they are linear functions written in a different form. So they're not written as gradient intercept form. Um, and we're going to look at how we do this. So our first step is to label the equations. So 2x plus y equals 7, we'll call that equation 1. And x equals y minus 4 is equation 2. And if we look at these two equations, equation 1 is not written in the form as x equals or y equals. However, equation 2 is, it's written as x equals y minus 4. So that can indicate our method of solving these by substitution. So, wherever I see x in equation 1, I'm going to replace it with y minus 4. So I need to write down what I'm doing. Here it is, we're going to sub equation 2 into equation 1. So we're writing down what we're doing. So that y minus 4 is going to go in place where the x is, so two lots of my x value, plus y equals 7. Now, several different methods we can do with this. I prefer to expand the brackets at this point. When we do so, we get 2y minus 8, so two lots of y is 2y, and two lots of negative 4 is negative 8. I'm not multiplying this by 2 because it wasn't part of the x value, which was the x value only was doubled. Now again, let's simplify some things and solve the equation. So 2y plus y is 3y minus 8 equals 7. And again, we have a two-step equation, which you should already know how to solve. So add 8 to both sides and then divide both sides by 3, and we get y equals 5. So I have skipped a couple of steps there, but as I said before, you should already be competent at being able to solve those um, two-step equations. So what we've now found is that these two equations have a common value of y equals 5, but we haven't finished yet. We also have to find our x value that they have in common. So let's divide my page so I can still see all the working out. So I'm going to take this y value, and substitute it back into one of these. Does it matter which one? No, not really. But if we look at equation two, if I replace y with a five, I can find out my answer straight away from there. So let's choose equation two. Write down what we're doing. So we're substituting y equals five into equation two. Let's do that. Replace the y value in equation two with five. 5 minus 4 gives me x equals 1. So I now have my x value and my y value. And normally I would then go and write, therefore, x equals 1 and y equals 5. However, that's not what the question was asking. It's after the point of intersection. So remember, a point on a Cartesian plane is represented in a pair of um, parentheses, but we're used to calling them brackets, separated by a comma. x value first y value second. So our point of intersection is the point 1, 5. So I hope that that's helped you out with solving by substitution. We can also use this method with nonlinear equations um, and it works quite well. So um, make sure you practice this, try some different types and just remember that we're not always using x's and y's, we can use different pronumerals in there 
Um, so don't be scared if all of a sudden you get an example where the pronumerals are different. Okay, thanks for watching.